My first name is Kathy, and my surname is Sue O'Brien. Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y, and my surname is S-O-O hyphen O apostrophe B-R-I-E-N. <laughs>
He'd probably been out on a stag night the night before with his colleagues. And um, he'd eaten a huge meal. He'd had plenty to drink, the dancing, the music. And as he settled down, well, the heat of the day got to him. And he could hear the music lilting across the air towards the sentry box from his own wedding reception. And guess what? Sir Trevor fell asleep. He did. He fell asleep. Meanwhile, back at the wedding reception, it came round to six o'clock in the evening. And even though it was Governor Warrender's only daughter's wedding day, being the kind of man he was, stickler for duty, and he insisted that he would go and do his rounds, checking the entire fort to make sure everything was perfect. Well, everything was perfect. He was delighted to see the whole fort was gleaming clean. Everything that could be painted was painted within an inch of its life. Everything that could be polished was gleaming so brightly you could see the sparkle of your own eyes in it. Still he walked on. He came to the Charles Bass and he was so pleased that he almost didn't notice that nobody challenged him from the sentry box. Nobody went, who goes there? But he did notice. He looked into the sentry box and there to his horror was the sentry fast asleep. Well, although he abhorred his duty, it was a matter of discipline. He reached into his pocket, he pulled out his pistol and bang, shot the sentry dead. Well, he didn't know what we know. The body was dragged down to the parade ground. The entire complement of the fort was marched around it so they could see what happened to a sentry who would fall asleep on duty. And because it was a military wedding, the wedding party came out. They came out of the governor's house here, onto the parade ground, and Wilful pushed her way to the front. That's the kind of girl she was. And ah, the poor girl cried because she knew that this was her darling love, her husband, just a few short hours. Well, the poor girl's mind snapped, and she ran up the ramps all the way to the Charles Bastion. And there, at the Charles Bastion, Having screamed her whole way there, she had silence and the beauty of the sea then crashing on the rocks, the birds singing in the sky, the sun shining down, the sea twinkling at her as it had with her and Trevor just a short while ago. But she realised she would never have Trevor's arms around her shoulders again. And so, with one last horrendous howl, the poor girl leapt from the Charles Bastion and went splat to her death on the rocks below. <gasps> Imagine the horror of being in the wedding party. Well, do not fear. The wedding feast did not go to waste. It became the funeral meets the very next day. Then, after the funeral, the governor was left alone. He found himself in his office at the very top here of the governor's house. And there on his desk in front of him was that self-same trusty pistol. Well, the poor governor, overcome with grief and remorse, lifted that pistol to his own temple and, yes, bang, blew his own brains out. So it was a triple tragedy. Some liken it to one wedding and three funerals. But ever since that day, there was a tremendous reluctance of soldiers to be stationed at Charles Fort. Why wouldn't they want to be stationed at Charles Fort? Well, it's said that if you should be the sentry at the Charles Bastion on a moonlit midnight, you might find that the mists swirl up off the sea and take on the form of a lady in white with dark, baleful eyes. She moans and glides all around the ramparts, searching, ever searching for her lost love, Sir Trevor Asher quite possibly those flowers she had wanted so badly.